This recording is to show you how I did the feet for Winnie the Pooh. Um, and it incorporates um, the feet that uh, have uh, the body turn and foot movement, squash and stretch, and in particular, Winnie the Pooh doesn't have pants that could overlap his feet. So I'm going to show how I did that. If for no other reason, to help me remember how I did it, so I can do it on other characters and maybe help some other people as well. So first I want to show that with a basic character that has the pants coming over the shoes, they, it's actually pretty easy. So we can do the uh, body turn and the foot movement and the squash and stretch and everything seems to come together. All you really need to do is have the pants come over the top of the shoe and then what you want to do is make sure that the bottom uh, points of the pant are bound to uh, to the foot bone here. So what were some of the challenges of Winnie the Pooh? Um, in Winnie the Pooh what I wanted to do is I have a bird's eye view of the feet to start with. So I see um, a line that comes over the top of the feet. So there's no pants or anything that cover or hide that portion of the foot. And as I turn him left and right, I wanted that um, line to thin out so it looks like a, an overlap here. And it needs to be different as I go left to right. I tried several approaches in, including multiple break points or, or points between here where the segments uh, were blocked out. Um, and that just made the um, drawing of the feet a bit complicated. Also, as I was looking at other references for Winnie the Pooh, I noticed that the foot sometimes was uh, turned up, and that was a little bit difficult to do with the, my initial approach. Finally, let me show you what one of the bigger problems was. As I turned the body and I turned the foot bone, the points don't match up, and it's a little bit difficult to resolve this with the typical approaches um, because um, the points are being controlled by two bones and when I squash and stretch it can make things even a little bit worse. So those are some of the things that I was trying to resolve um, with a different approach. The final thing that you might notice is that um, with my original approach of trying to turn everything with a single body bone he kind of looks like he's sliding when you turn his body and so his feet are actually moving. So now I'm going to show you the approach that I chose to take instead. So the first thing to notice is that the left foot and the right foot are both um, using switch layers. So we see we have a right foot switch layer and I've got a number of different positions up and, up and in, up and out, left, right, and front. I then have a bone, right foot bone, that controls these switch layers. That perhaps wasn't the best name for this because I've actually got two bones that are closely named, the only difference in case sensitive. Um, but let me show you how I did the action for the right foot. Um, I just have the bone control here, but specifically as I go to the right foot, um, switch layer we can see that I'm using um, step uh, uh, step keyframes in order to switch between them. That allows the um, foot to switch instantly and not go through uh, a, a change, morph. Notice you can do that same approach for mouths where you might want to have uh, them flexible but have phonemes controlled by a switch like, by a bone smartphone for controlling them. So now I'm going to show the details of how I get all the points to align as I stretch and squash and move the different bones. And we're going to just focus on the right position, right facing foot, and you do the same kind of thing with all the different switch layers. Now initially when, we, when I set this one up, I had the, um, uh, the switch layers, each one controlled by the layer. Um, so we want to make sure we turn that off. If you look here, this bone is controlling the layer for the foot 
so I just want to go to the bone and release the layer. So now the points aren't uh, directly control, uh, attached through the layer. So what I'm going to do here is bind all of the points of the foot and I'm going to bind all of the uh, a certain set of points to the foot bone and a certain and one point to the shin bone in this particular case. So here I'm going to select oops select I'll only get the bone select right. I'm going to select a foot bone and now I'm going to select the points except for this heel part here because they're going to move with the foot bone. So I'm going to bind those points to this foot bone. Now I'm going to select the shin bone and select that heel point using the bone control tools and bind that point to the shin. The next thing I'm going to do is in the right leg I have three points that I'm going to join to. These are the points, the left and the right points, are the ones I want the foot to appear to attach to. Um, so to do that, I'm going to make sure that they bind to the shin bone. The last step, step is, of course, to uh, make sure that all the smart bone actions align the points properly so that you don't get uh, the kind of gaps and bending that we see here. But you need to make sure that you uh, fix them for both um, the shin bone movement and the foot movement um, so that uh, all of the different types of positioning that you can do are taken care of. Now I'm going to walk through this quickly in case people haven't seen it before, uh, but uh, my expectation is that most people understand how to do this because there's lots of other tutorials on the smart bones. However, there's one particular point that I want to make sure is really clear, and that's about uh, the stretch and squatch and how it can cause things to pop. Because I'm using target bones here, um, when I go from frame zero to frame one, uh, it didn't happen on both the feet, but on one of the feet, um, it had the point popping out of position. So I needed to make sure that on all of my actions, on frame one, I aligned the points. Let me show you what that kind of looked like. The situation was that when I went to do the actions, the heel point would pop out a little bit. Now it's not happening much here, so I've kind of artificially done it, but you can see as I go between frame zero and frame one, I get a little popping of movement there. And so what I needed to do was make sure that at frame one, I aligned the heel point and the right leg point. So I went ahead and created a uh, frame for each of the important points on the leg. So I get a positioning here, a keyframe there. And so now, I do the same thing for each of the critical points on the foot. Now as I move, I can go through all of the different kinds of positions, positionings I want. And in this particular case, here's what I did here. I just made the foot look like it kind of extended down, kind of like a teddy bear, because Winnie the Pooh is a teddy bear. And I um, just made it look a little bit smooth that way. So that's how I did that foot. Now I need to make sure that I do it for the right foot um, and the right foot too as well. Don't forget that you've got two different uh, directions in general. And then also I needed to do it for the right leg. So wanted to make sure that all of those, in all of those situations, the points aligned at frame one. Now notice I don't have a keyframe so it's good to set that keyframe to make sure um, so that when you stretch and squash because sometimes you'll have a situation where in uh, the setup you don't see a problem but when you actually move the um, feet you will see that um, problem so that's why you want to set those keyframes okay so let's just real briefly show what it looks like um, I can turn the body and the feet stay fixed so it doesn't look like he's sliding around the ground. Um, I can stretch and squash 
move his foot around. Now I've got a little bit of bump here that I could fix. I uh, didn't notice that before. And I can turn his foot and it all seems to be attached properly. And of course I can switch to the different feet. And the same thing happens. Now I go a little bit too far here, but that's that's just how I've set it up. You could fix that. And that's Winnie the Pooh. Hope you enjoyed it.